Grumpy, boyish, and homely. These are the words that accurately describe what I looked like when I was 16 years old. In a disgusting Catholic school uniform, a plaid heap of gray, maroon, and yellow fabric. Three colors that under no circumstance should be hanging out together. My skirt, a length scientifically measured by the tips of my fingers. My shoes, rubbery and black, stomping through the halls. My only jewelry was a mouthful of shiny silver braces, bands pink for Valentine's Day, bands emerald green for Christmas, hands calloused, fingers unpolished, face stern like my father. I remember the nuns. With concerned faces, they would rush around the hallways, making sure everyone promised to save themselves from marriage. And they looked at me and they were like, eh, we don't have to worry about this one. <laughs> this image of a plaid tomboy stumbling around the hallway, half open backpack, arms full of books, a colorful rainbow smile, this is what learning looks like to me. And the sound of learning. Learning sounds like attendance being called. Not by a teacher who knows what's up, but by a teacher whose cold mouth couldn't possibly handle the twists and turns of little brown names. Julia turns to Julia. Carolina turns to Carolina. But there's my name, Jasmine Silva, and they couldn't possibly mess that up. So I'd wait for it, wait for it. Jasmine, saliva. <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> it's close enough. But the sound of my classmates' names being called, repeated, corrected, yelled, whispered across years and grades and classes. It's music. It's music with a rhythm and a beat. Music that you think is annoying until you finally listen to the lyrics. And in fact, you haven't really heard this song in a while and you kind of like it. I bet if you get quiet, you can think about that song. And so that's what learning sounds like to me. Now, touch is interesting because I've been wondering what learning feels like. It used to feel like the vinyl on a school bus seat, the way your thighs would stick in the summer, the sleek pages of a math book, the powders left on your fingers after using a piece of chalk. But you know, lately I've been learning some really important things and learning hasn't felt like that. This year, for the first time, I hung my picture up on my door. My big smiling face, stickers, signs, flashing arrows, anything that screams 759, come on in. Because that's what I am, a helper. When I was seven years old, I promised God that I would save the entire world if he let me ace one spelling test. And let me tell you, I aced the test, but the deal was not fair. Especially when you came into my room, hysterical and crying, and you said, I told him to stop, but he wouldn't and it froze, because I couldn't fix that. And that night I learned that I might not have the courage to save the world. And what are you supposed to do with that? So that day, learning felt like helplessness. And on a morning like this, I look at those chairs and I see you, my friends, but can you guys also see the people who are not here with us right now? The people who didn't make it through the four or five years? And I specifically think of you and what you taught me, the boy whose heart had no more room for learning. You spent three days in the hospital, and each day we talked about solitude, freedom, friendship, family. The walls are only audience, and I swear, the second hand on the clock moved especially slow for us. And I learned from you that the will to live is a gift. It's a gift that you can't ask for, and in a second I would give you mine. I would box it up, I'd put a gold bow on it, I'd overnight it. But no matter how hard I try, you just can't give it to someone else. And learning that, that felt like guilt. Sometimes you can't recognize learning with your other senses. Your eyes don't work, sounds are meaningless, it's not even a lesson that's graded. You just know what's happening when you feel it in your heart. And you start to walk different, and you start to talk different. And people say, hey, something's changed about you lately. But you won't be able to explain what it is. And right now, I can feel this robe, but what does that mean? Are we done learning now? Is it over? It can't be true. If I stop learning, then how am I standing here? My heart hasn't stopped, my air hasn't emptied, my airway hasn't emptied, my soul hasn't freed itself from my body, and it's not gonna happen anytime soon. So here's my one last proposal. Let's celebrate leaving the dorms, let's toast to the end of our meal plans, Let's kiss the ground and thank the skies that we'll never take another exam. 
but promise me, even if it hurts your heart, you will not stop learning. Thank you.